So here, um, we're just going to go ahead and start with the very first step um, of actual composition. Let's assume we've all, um, you know, um, we've all gone through the file already as we have. Um, so the first thing is, is that we're going to go ahead and apply the SCML template. So to apply the SCML template, all you have to do is you have to go to the SAI here and then apply SCML template. Once you get to this um, dialog box, select no. If you happen to have clicked yes, um, you can cancel out of the following dialog box um, because we're not gonna be associating styles with this document. So then we're gonna go ahead and hit no. The next thing um, that we do is we uh, check for graphics. So we're gonna go and scroll down to uh, that nice picture of the cat attacking the other cat. Uh, right here, it's on page According to my screen, nine out of 11, but I know where it pages things differently. Um, you can also search for the word attack. That'll get you to that image quickly. It's the only image in the document. And we're going to save it out. I'm actually not gonna go ahead and do the same process I did before. Um, I believe if I hit save as picture, it'll let you drop out as JPEG as Alicia um, confirmed in the chat earlier. And so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and save that um, right here into our document that avoids us having to use earth view. We still like earth view because it's, it's nice and um, robust, but at the same time simple, but you know, um, this is a simpler way and we're just going to go ahead and save that. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. And then I'm going to remove that image. And once we get to that point, um, so we're just going to, move on from from here as it is not necessary to actually save the image um, at this point um, if you haven't been able to take it we can actually just um, remove it um, and now we're going to apply um, the image query so if we go and place <coughs> excuse me if we place um, the um, cursor where we want the image query to be inserted usually on a new line um, we go ahead and place our cursor there, insert query um, in the SAI under editorial, and then I am for image query, and we type in the name of the image, which we've named fig01.jpg, and then hit OK. Please let me know if this is a little too fast. Okay, Mark, give me the OK. Got an OK from Karen. Okay, got plenty of OKs. So we're good now. Um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and apply um, the paragraph styles to um, the chapter numbers, chapter titles, part numbers, part titles, and other um, head uh, material. So we're going to go to view and switch to draft view. We should already have the style area pane, but just as a quick refresher, if you need that, all you have to do is go to file, Options, advanced, scroll down to the bottom where it says display and where it says style area pane width in draft and outline views, just put in a number one and then hit OK and you should have your style area pane. And so we're gonna go through and I'm gonna just do this first one and then as, um, as a practical time, I'm gonna have you go through the um, other um, heads and uh, in the document. So I'm gonna get rid of this half title information because that's all that it's, it's just information, instructions telling us what it is. So we're gonna get rid of that. Just go ahead and delete that. Delete the square brackets around OTN demo, right? And I'm going to use the style galleries as I feel that that's the one people are gonna be most comfortable with, but remember there are other options. So if we go to style galleries, right, we're going to load our default. So just in case I went too quickly, style galleries, load default. And I'm going to go to this first one where it says front matter, zero one front matter. And then say, okay. And here we have our style gallery. I'm going to place my cursor you don't have to highlight all the text. You can just place your cursor there, especially when applying paragraph styles. If you're applying character styles, which we haven't done just yet, um, you would have to select the text that you want applied. Um, so go ahead and click 
on where it says OTN demo, and we're gonna make that the book half title. So it's BKHT3 if you loaded the default uh, gallery. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on that and make that BKHT. So here we'll do just one more just to uh, sort of um, hammer it um, home, right? We're gonna get rid of this add card instruction and this uh, open uh, square bracket. I'm gonna place our cursor in our paragraph and we're gonna make this series title which is S-E-R-T. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on that. S-E-R-T is right over here. It's on the fourth column from the left um, and fourth row from the top. And that's S-E-R-T. And again, remember we're treating these, even though it's not necessarily called a head, it is a head-like um, a paragraph and so that's why we're composing it now versus composing it later although um, as you guys are working it's um, good to say this if you're going through and you're composing a document and then later on you discovered oh no I miss a head or I miss something um, it's not the end of the world you can always go back and just compose it um, after the fact the reason we work in chunks is just so that we can make sure not to find tell if there are no other questions um, you can go ahead and uh, work on um, the file I hadn't go through and apply I'm going to also be doing it on the screen share so that way you guys can see how how I'm working but um, go through the rest of the document and compose anything that is like that head like material so chapter number chapter title subtitle that title page you can leave the copyright page alone and the dedication page alone as well um, table of contents go ahead and compose that and any other head materials you see in the uh, in the document. So we'll go ahead and do that. Tell this, Tim, let, this is Richard. Let me mm. just let's mention one thing just occurred to me, mm -hmm. and that is uh, you've got us working with a single file here, and I presume mm -hmm. that you folks typically work with a single file for a manuscript. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, that makes a presumption that I think we all need to pay attention to, and that is that we already have established very solid um, um, archive procedures so that we know what's being worked on and what's not being worked on at a given time. Correct. Because otherwise you can end up saving things over the top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. Correct. That's one of the reasons why my question earlier was if you break up into chapters, what we would do. Mm -hmm. My experience in the time that I was a project manager, we always broke things into chapters because then if you made an error in one place, you didn't have to worry about it. Um, having problems elsewhere. So th that's, that's just me being an archivist as much as anything else is you want to make sure that you have very well established procedures for how do you open files, how do you save files, where do you save them, and what circumstances. Right. right. Editorial you. comment all, is all. Right. But no, that's actually a good point to address, especially now while we're, we're addressing some questions. Um, you know, and, and Richard is right that there is, there is a, that certain benefit that if you have split everything up, if, you know, one file becomes, you know, corrupted by no fault of, uh, you know, anyone else, um, you know, now you still have the rest of, of the document. However, um, the way that, that we work in Scribe is that we, um, in order to sort of avoid having multiple people with the multiple points of view sort of addressing things, um, we split up the work by task. So for example, the person who is doing the composition uh, may not necessarily be the person that does the editorial and the person who does the editorial may not necessarily be the, the typesetter, although if somebody's like a, a wonder kid of that kind and they can do all three, great, wonderful, right? Um, so what we do um, is that we do have backup procedures um, and actually that's something that we're going to discuss once we get to the lesson on um, actual um, uh, project management and, and other little guidelines that um, we here at Scribe have and give as recommendations. You, know, we actually have a process in which we take the file and we make a copy of it, save it, date it, so that we know that that's file, but that we can go back to it if necessary. So um, that is taken um, into account. And uh, when we work with multiple chapters, we often do combine the file so that way we're having one consistent uh, composition throughout the entire manuscript. Um, and that's one of the, the advantages of sort of working in one file. 
Okay. So I think we can probably proceed. I'm not sure where um, everyone is in composing. I'm just going to go ahead and just um, give you guys a little bit more time and compose uh, the heads here um, myself. Um, and then that way you can also see how I'm doing it. I won't be uh, delineating everything I'm doing just so, for the sake of time and because we've already uh, gone a little bit over that. I will try to go as as slow as possible so that way people can see what I'm doing. 